Hey guys, I'm the Burke and I do things. And one of the things I like to do on this channel is every season go back and look at my favorites from the previous season and talk about them and let you know are those still products that are favorites of mine or have I moved on from them and I no longer enjoy them. So I will be going over some of my spring 2018 favorites. If that is something that interests you, then keep on watching. Let's go. So starting in March, I had a lot of favorites in March. That is for sure. So the first product that I was loving last spring was the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. I actually really still enjoy this. This is my second or third one of these I've gone through. I've already taken out the stopper and this one has like close to no product left. And I have another one of these in my backup box if you haven't seen that video yet. So yes, this is definitely something I highly, highly still recommend and love. And for $7, it's such a great deal. And it's very good coverage. And if you find the new e.l.f. concealer a little too drying, I think this one's a little less drying than that one. And yeah, it's a good concealer. I really like it. The next product was this guy, the Laneige Sleeping Mask. And I think when I put this in my favorites last March, it was before it was ever even in Sephora, I want to say, because I had bought it in this pack from YesStyle.com and I loved it. And not long after it seemed like everyone was talking about it, it smells so good. But yeah, this is one of the big sizes. I've already gone through a little guy and I have lots of backups of minis of this. And yes, I consciously try to remember to put this on before I go to bed every night because it helps a lot. The next product is a makeup brush and it is this makeup brush. This is the AOA Studio F14 brush. I had done my first ever Shop Masse video March of last year and I was saying how great this brush is and I still feel that way. The, br the black handled brushes are amazing from Shop Masse and if you're ever shopping from them and looking for brushes to try out, I highly recommend the ones that have the black handles. Okay, the next product is a Shop Masse product that I do not have because I fully used it up. It's from the brand Amuse Cosmetics and it was their tinted brow gel. And I thought it was a great brow gel. Have I repurchased it? No, because I have so many other brow gels available in my drawers right here. But no, I really did enjoy it. My only issue with it was the wand on it is a little bit bigger than I love, but that's how I feel about the Anastasia one too. So I really liked it and I would recommend it. Okay, next is my favorite mascara, which is the Benefit Roller Lash. No, this is not the same one from last March. But yes, I have repurchased this. I've gone through, this is probably my third roller lash. I prefer minis in general, but yes, my favorite mascara, my go-to mascara, if I need a full day of lashes. Oh, look at that. Last year I had scrunchies. Who would have known now I'm a scrunchie and headband girl? The total uh, combination platter here. <laughs> okay, my next product I had on there was ColourPop Flexitarium. Last month, I actually included this in my top drugstore highlighters, so I still feel like this is a favorite. I have the lip product I have on in my last year's favorites, and I forgot about it. And when I put it on this morning, I was like, holy crap, why did I ever stop wearing this? This is amazing. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Gloss in the shade Bare Attraction. And I forgot how, much, how good this formula is. So this is kind of what it looks like. It smells yummy. It is a great product. Yes, I still love it. I just kind of forgot about it for a little, which is why these videos are really awesome. So those were my March favorites from last year. Now, I only have two makeup products from last April. The first is still a favorite. It is the Smashbox So Chill Coconut Spray, which I believe was limited edition. So I use it like never because I don't want it to go away. However, it seems like a lot of brands are catching on to this coconut scented spray fad. So I definitely have options now, but yes, I still love this. I like the primer water, the regular one, but I really do love the one that smells like coconuts. And then the eyeshadow palette I had in last April's favorites was this one from NYX. And this is the Love You So Mochi Electric Pastels palette. Oh dear, one of those shades just broke. It's because they're so soft. I'm just literally pushing it back together because it's such a soft formula. Got some sparkle on my pants now. Okay, I'm going to be very careful. Okay, so this one just broke, but I pushed it back together. So this formula is very interesting. 
it's not something you can use on its own. It's almost like a topper. I can swatch a couple of the shades. I haven't used this lately, but that's because it hasn't been electric pastel like season. Like that's coming up now, but this is what they look like, some of the shades. But as you can tell, like when I swatch them, they're very more like a topper. And this was why I wasn't crazy about the one we got from Smashbox and Ipsy in my Ipsy Glam Bag. I think it was my first one because I like the way these work a lot better than the Smashbox ones. So I think these are great. It's a great formula, but it's not one that you could ever use alone. And the palette's expensive. That's another like gripe I have with it. It's a $20 palette, which NYX loves to do, but NYX often has really good sales. So this is one that I definitely bought on sale. So if you are interested in these kind of, these kind of colors, I would wait till you see it on sale. And now on to May last year. My first favorite was this guy, the Lara Lee Los Angeles Nudie Patootie Palette. Okay, so I'm not sure what you think of Lara Lee or her brand or any of that, but let me tell you something. This is a great neutral eyes shadow palette. Like there's no, there's no like secret behind that. Like I love these shadows. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. It's so great if you just want a quick, easy, no nonsense look. Like this is where it's at. And I haven't really been interested in any of the other eyeshadows she's come out with, but I'm very glad that I purchased this because I think it's a great staple nude palette. Next one is another one I haven't reached for in a while and it's just because of the time of year. It's the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival Palette and I love this guy. So this is what it looks like. I saw the new, I guess, festival season palette they came out with for this year and I think this one is a lot better looking. I love this palette. This is probably one of my top drugstore eyeshadow palettes if you asked me. I obviously have not worn these colors lately, but coming up, I definitely will. I love this yellow glittery color. I like doing like sunsetty kind of looks with this. It's a really, really good palette. I think it was limited edition. I don't think it's still available. I'm not too sure. My next favorite from May was this, and this came in BoxyCharm. This was the Pure Sculptor palette, and the reason I loved it was for this highlighter right here, which I actually used in my inner corners today. This palette smells like chocolate, but this one highlighter from Pure is so pretty. It's right there. It's so pretty, and because of that, I almost put this in my April 5 for this month, but because of how dark the bronzers are, I didn't, but maybe I will for another month because you can use these as eyeshadows, so I'll think about it. The next is something I actually decluttered and it is the Essence Eye and Face Palette. And it was like this little like $3 palette I had from Essence. The eyeshadows in it were so bad, but the highlighter in it was awesome. But one of the reasons I decluttered it was because it didn't really make sense to keep an eyeshadow palette that was awful just for one little highlighter when I have tons of highlighters. So yeah, I got rid of that one. Then last May, I discovered MAC Fix Plus, and I think it's because this was in the 21 Days of Beauty for Ulta, so I finally went in and got it. But this is actually the second one of these I have, so I've already fully gone through one and I have this much left to hear. That being said, I use this so sparingly because it is expensive and because what I was using it for before was melting my powders, which I now use my really cheap Catrice spray for, so I'm able to preserve this a little better now. And the last favorite from last spring was still something I love and is the Maybelline Loose Powder. I still recommend this when people ask me for good drugstore loose setting powders. I always recommend the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. So yeah, I had a lot of favorites last May and I feel like not much has changed. So let me know, do you guys still love these products or have you kind of moved on from them? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. As usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Twitter and my Instagram down below. Give them a follow and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.